Welcome to our first lecture video for ENG 431, Applied Electronics. And so in this class, we're going to be looking at a number of different types of circuits and real world considerations for those circuits. And where we're going to start is by looking at integrated circuit biasing. And of course, remember, we can abbreviate integrated circuit is just IC. And so the reason that we want to consider integrated circuit biasing is typically what we've looked at in previous classes is we've looked at biasing in with resistors and capacitors. So if we do this though, we're actually going to be using a lot more space than if we just use transistors. So resistors and relatively large capacitors, smaller capacitors aren't going to be as much of an issue. Um, but if we use these things, they're going to take up a lot of space. So that's okay if we're doing some type of discrete circuits. So that by discrete, I mean we're maybe going into the lab and we're physically picking out each resistor, each capacitor, each transistor. So that's fine. But once we're looking at an integrated circuit where everything is being put on the same piece of silicon wafer, then these resistors and capacitors are going to become very large and not practical. So what we're going to want to look at is how can we bias these transistors with other transistors? So remember our transistors are going to be much smaller than our resistors and capacitors in general. And so current technology is on the order of 14 nanometer critical dimension size. And so just to kind of get in your mind how small that is, of course we can remember that DNA is on the order of two nanometers in size. So we're talking about devices that are extremely small. So if we can use these to replace resistors and capacitors, that's going to be to our benefit. So typically what we talked about in previous classes is in order to amplify a signal or for amplification to occur, we have to have our transistors in what we call the forward active mode for BJTs. And so for this discussion of our IC biasing, we're going to talk about uh, BJT circuits, but of course there are going to be analogous cases for uh, field effect transistors. But for our BJTs, if we want to have amplification, let me just put a note up here, this is for our BJTs, our bipolar junction transistors. For amplification, we need these devices to be operating in the forward active mode. So just as a quick refresher, there's a nice little chart on page 310 in the Neiman textbook, Neiman's microelectronics textbook, which sort of breaks down the mode that we're operating in based on our junction voltages. So we have two junction voltages to consider. We have our base collector voltage and we have our base emitter voltage. So depending on which one of the, what biases we have, what bias combination, um, we can be in one of four modes. So the mode we're interested in, our forward active mode is actually down here. And so this is when our base emitter junction is forward biased and our base collector junction is reverse biased. If both are forward biased, we have saturation. If our, both are reverse biased, we have cutoff. And then if we have sort of the opposite of forward active, if our BC is forward biased and our BE is reverse biased, we have what we call the inverse active mode. And so for most applications, we're looking at amplifying. So we are saying we want to be in this forward active region, which means that our VBE we want to be greater than zero. And our VBC, we want to be less than, or we'll say in most cases, we can actually have it equal to zero, but we want that to be negative so that that junction is reverse biased. Okay, so we can look at how we can bias these transistors. So if we look at just a standard BJT, so we have our emitter with the arrow coming out here. We have our base, and let's say we have some input under our base VI and maybe we have some power connected to this with the resistor. So of course we can't eliminate resistors entirely from our circuit, but we wanna minimize their use. And maybe our output is defined here, V out. So let's say this is our collector resistor because it's collected to, connected to our collector. And so what we have over here, and we had seen this in a previous class, is we can bias this circuit with a current source. So this is current I naught, 
And we also talked about briefly, I believe, at least having a, a, a bypass capacitor in parallel with that. So we can have a bypass capacitor between our emitter and ground. And maybe this is some voltage V minus. So if we look at this current source I naught, essentially what this I naught is doing is it's setting our quiescent collector current, our ICQ. And in doing so, it's biasing the transistor. So what we're gonna actually look at when we talk about IC biasing is we're gonna say, how do we make this current source out of transistors? So that's sort of our big question going into this topic. How to make this current source, and in this case it's called I naught, with transistors. And so what we're gonna do in the next series of videos, we're gonna look at various designs of how we can accomplish that. And we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of each one.